Welcome to our e-learning video series about the expansion of human mesenchymal stem cells in stirred bioreactors, specifically those derived from human adipose tissue. We want to show you an approach which allows rapid process transfer from milliliter to benchtop scale using small spherical particles, so-called microcarriers. In the video, we give you an overview of the main steps. Let's start with a short introduction. Human mesenchymal stem cells, HMSCs for short, are a type of adult stem cell that can be isolated from various tissues and expanded in vitro. There are numerous reports on the possible clinical applications of HMSCs for the treatment of different degenerative diseases, which has sparked considerable interest in them. This is particularly because HMSCs can be accessed more easily than stem cells from bone marrow. However, their low frequency in the body makes direct collection for therapeutic applications impractical. In fact, the use of HMSCs in allergenic stem cell therapies requires billions or even trillions of clinical grade cells. For this reason, an alternative to the routinely used cell factories or cell stacks is urgently required. Cell factories and cell stacks are planar multilayer plastic plates on which two-dimensional cell growth is limited by the surface area available. The 40-layer units provide cell yields of up to 1 billion cells. However, it is difficult to ensure a consistently high cell quality. An alternative to these planar systems is provided by scalable stirred bioreactors operating with microcarriers. Within a few days, the adherent mesenchymal stem cells can attach to and grow on the microcarrier surface while maintaining their stem cell quality. The microcarrier surface should not only support cell attachment, but also spreading and proliferation. I want to come back to our expansion procedures for HMSCs, which you can now see schematically presented. Clearly, the starting point for all cell expansion processes is a vial-based working cell bank that is supplied with cells from a master cell bank. First of all, cells from the working cell bank are thawed and directly inoculated into spinner flasks. An extensive screening study at milliliter scale is necessary in order to establish the optimum cultivation conditions. In other words, the best medium microcarrier combination, microcarrier concentration, inoculum cell density and impeller speed all have to be determined. When doing this, more than six passages and high shear stress have to be avoided due to the high risk of cell differentiation. There is also a risk of cell differentiation during the cell harvest, which is generally preceded by chemical treatment. Maximum cell yields are sought with viabilities of around 95% after cell harvest. Screening studies to set preconditions for successful cell expansions are very important, but are not detailed in this description of our cultivation approach. Our focus is on cell production at spinner scale. This is shown in video number 3, as well as at benchtop scale, which is described in video number 4. In addition, the bioengineering investigations of the stirred cultivation systems chosen, that is, the 125 milliliter Corning spinner and the 2 liter Univessel SU, are explained in video number 2. These bioengineering characterizations include sedimentation studies with microcarriers, fluid dynamic simulation studies, and finally, particle image velocimetry investigations. They form the second pillar of our cultivation approach alongside the previously mentioned screening studies. Stem cell differentiation by shear stress can occur in stirred cultivation systems with microcarriers as well as in harvesting procedures. To prevent this, cell quality is monitored. In video number five, common analytical methods are briefly introduced. These include flow cytometric analyses and differentiation studies. This approach was developed in a research project in collaboration with the LIFT team at Lonsa in Cologne. We would like to thank the team for their excellent work. The project was also supported by the Commission for Technology and Innovation in Switzerland, as well as by Sartorius Stedham Biotech. Click replay to watch this video again or follow the links to the other videos.